South Korea as the country remembers a former president who died 10 years ago today. Government officials, lawmakers, as well as former U.S. President George W. Bush are gathering in No Mu Hun's hometown to pay their respects. No ship, no talks. North Korea plays hardball over Washington's seizure of one of its vessels for apparent sanctions violations. The regime says it won't hold nuclear negotiations with the U.S. until it hands the ship over. Plus, tense talks in Paris. The top diplomats of South Korea and Japan will meet in the French capital Thursday as the countries remain mired in a series of disputes over historical issues. Our top story this morning, a senior North Korean official says the U.S. seizure of a North Korean cargo ship is the biggest obstacle to improving bilateral relations. The North ambassador to the U.N. also insisted the Trump administration must lift sanctions before the stalled nuclear negotiations can resume. Our Lee Sung Jae starts us off. According to North Korea's ambassador to the U.N., Han Des hung the U.S. seizure of the Wise Honest, a North Korean cargo ship suspected of illicit coal transfers, is the biggest stumbling block to improving the relationship between Pyongyang and Washington, stressing that the ship must be returned immediately. America should ponder consequences. It heinous act might have impact on the future development and should return our ship immediately. Pyongyang, which is under U.S. and U.N. sanctions for its nuclear and missile programs, has stepped up its campaign of demanding the return of the cargo ship. In the regime's latest demand, Han described the seizure as a wanton violation of international law. The U.S. impotent act of forcing other countries into their obstacles at the uh, domestic law is indeed wanton violation of the universally accepted international law, which makes clear that in no case it can sovereign state be an object of the jurisdiction of other countries. The ambassador added the Trump administration must make a big decision on lifting sanctions before nuclear negotiations with the North can resume. As for the resuming the talks with America, it is clearly stated by our leader in his policy speech in last April. So and if they don't change their minds, if, don't, if they don't make a big decision, so we are not obsessed over the in a, another round of talks with the USA out of you know thirsty for lifting sanctions. Han also answered questions on the regime's recent test firing of several projectiles and short-range missiles, saying the tests were a routine check of the North's national defense capabilities, indicating they would continue launches if they feel like it. Uh, now they, you know, the, the America and the South Korea, they are waging, in March and April, they waged the joint military exercise. Mm -hmm. Even at this very moment, they are planning, you know, that kinds of joint military exercise or, or other, you know, exercise against us. Mm -hmm. So to cope with that, we also be prepared. Asked about how the North is managing the current food shortages reported by U.N. agencies, Han says it's manageable, adding the real problem are the U.N. sanctions and their impact on the North Korean people. Lee seung Arirang News. South Korean Foreign Minister Kang kyung hwa will meet one-on-one -on -one in the coming hours with her Japanese counterpart Taro Kono. Seoul's Foreign Ministry says the two ministers who are in Paris for a ministerial council meeting of the OECD 
We'll sit down Thursday afternoon local time to discuss a range of issues. The meeting comes just days after Japan demanded the establishment of an arbitration panel involving a third country to resolve the wartime forced labor row between Seoul and Tokyo. Regarding Tokyo's demand, an official from Seoul's foreign ministry said the ministry will review the matter while carefully considering all related issues. Now, ask most Koreans where they were when they heard the news and they'll be able to tell you uh, where they were and what they were feeling in very vivid detail. Today, May 23rd, 2019 marks exactly 10 years to the day since former President No Mu Hun committed suicide, leaving the country shell-shocked and saddened. Thousands of people have been flocking to Bongha village where the liberal leader was laid to rest to remember him. Our Parky June Fazer's report from Bangha in South Korea's southeast. It's been a decade since the passing of former President No Mu Hyun. No took his own life in 2009 after serving as the 16th president of South Korea from 2003 to 2008. Now President Moon Jae-in was his presidential chief of staff and longtime friend. He was also No's attorney when he was being investigated for bribery allegations. At Ponga village near Kime, Gyeongsangnam-do province, the late president's hometown and resting place, there are endless visitors who don't want to let go of his memory. I still can't believe it's been 10 years. I still have the memories from when he was alive. I came here to relieve some of my emotional burden. I still feel tears coming out. Commoners like us liked a world where we could say what we wanted to say. That was possible because we had someone like him. Even his private residence is full of visitors to mark the 10th anniversary. No used to greet guests a dozen times a day. Although he can no longer do so, the residence has been open to the public since May last year. Tracing his course of life at his home, I can experience what kind of life he lived. And to mark the 10th anniversary of his passing, a memorial service will be held here at his grave on Thursday the 23rd. Around 5,000 people are expected to attend the ceremony to remember and honor the late President No Mu Hyun. Among the attendees is former U.S. President George W. Bush, No's counterpart during his term. Prime Minister Lee nak and National Assembly Speaker Moon Lee-sang will also attend the event. Park Ki-jun, Arirang News, Kim Hae. Now, President Moon Jae-in is believed to be in a meeting with former U.S. President George W. Bush at this hour for talks on upgrading the two countries' bilateral ties and promoting friendship. The Blue House says they could be discussing ways to advance the nuclear negotiations with North Korea, drawing on Mr. Bush's past experience with the six-party talks during his time in the White House. Later this afternoon, as we heard, Bush will attend the ceremony in Bongha village to mark the 10th anniversary of the death of former South Korean President No Myung Hyun. The two work closely together as their terms in office overlap from 2003 to 2008. A major British-based chip designer has decided to cut all ties with Huawei, threatening the Chinese tech giant's ability to make its own smartphone chips. The move comes after the Trump administration's trade ban on Huawei just last week. Kim Hyo-sun with the details. Huawei is facing yet another challenge as UK-based chip designer Arm has suspended business with the Chinese tech giant. The BBC reported Wednesday that the company instructed all its staff to cut ties with Huawei due to the U.S. trade ban issued last week. Arm, a global semiconductor company established in 1990, provides blueprints to design the processors that power smartphones. Huawei, in common with Apple and chip makers like Samsung Electronics and Qualcomm, all use such technology. Most of Huawei's 5G communication network equipment is known to be based on architecture provided by Arm. MA concerns this could deal another significant blow to the Chinese company. Beijing's top diplomat said Wednesday that Washington's pressure on its tech giant is economic bullying at a move to try to prevent the country's development. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi also criticized the U.S. for breaking the trade negotiations between the world's two largest economies by exerting such economic pressure.
Meanwhile, U.S. Treasury Secretary Stephen Munichin has expressed optimism for resuming negotiations with Beijing. Speaking at a Senate hearing on Wednesday, he stressed that new negotiations may take place when the two countries can move forward based on the talks they have already had. Although he did not elaborate on the specific timing of future negotiations, Munichin did mention that Presidents Trump and Xi are highly likely to meet late next month on the sidelines of the G20 summit in Osaka, Japan. Kim san Arirang News. Now, officials at the Federal Reserve have reconfirmed the Fed's current monetary policy could remain in place for some time to come, signaling they see little need to change interest rates in either direction. According to the newly released minutes of the Fed's meeting held from April 30th to May 1st, they agreed the current patient approach is necessary for the near future, despite continued improvements in the global economic and financial conditions. They also assessed the recent weak inflation as only temporary. Following the meeting, the Fed kept its interest rate steady at between two and a quarter and two and a half percent. U.S. President Donald Trump has lashed out at Democrats after House Speaker Nancy Pelosi accused him of engaging in a cover-up. He held an angry five-minute meeting with top Democrats at the White House before heading to the Rose Garden to say that he can't work with Democrats until the investigations into him end. For more on this and other news from around the world, let's turn to our Hong Yu. So tell us more about this growing tension between the Democrat-controlled Congress and President Trump. Well, Mark, it was a dramatic warning for President Trump and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi as they exchanged insults through media briefing after their infrastructure meeting only lasted for five minutes before being halted by the president. After having finished a meeting with Democrats calling for Congress to start impeach him, impeachment proceedings against President Trump, Pelosi went to the White House to talk about infrastructure reform. The meeting was cut short by Trump, who said he cannot work with Democrats as they continue as slew of investigations against him. Trump fired back at Pelosi's accusation that he's engaged in a cover-up as he made a surprise Rose Garden appearance. Let's take a listen to what he said. Things are going well. And I said, let's have the meeting on infrastructure. We'll get that done easily. That's one of the easy ones. And instead of walking in happily into a meeting, I walk in to look at people that had just said, that I was doing a cover-up. I don't do cover-ups. You people know that probably better than anybody. President Trump called the Russian investigation the takedown attempt and said he would not work with Democrats on a major infrastructure proposal because of the, quote, phony investigations they're pursuing in Congress. Soon after Trump's remarks to the media, Pelosi and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer held their own briefing. Pelosi called the five-minute meeting with Trump, quote, very, very strange and sad. This is why I think the president was so steamed off this morning, because the fact is, in plain sight, in the public domain, this president is obstructing justice and he's engaged in a cover-up. And that could be an impeachable offense. So it's not just the substance that we're after and we want to have to give the truth to the American people. As power struggle between President Trump and Democrats escalates, Pelosi, along with other senior House leaders, are set to be exploring possible impeachment proceedings against Trump. Andrea Letsim, the leader of the House of Commons and a prominent Brexiteer, has resigned as British Prime Minister Theresa May's Brexit plan was hit by a massive backlash from her own party's MPs. Letsim says she could not announce a new withdrawal agreement bill, which will implement Britain's departure from the EU in the Parliament on Thursday, as she did not believe in it. With Letsim quitting, May could face further defections from her allying government ahead of her fourth attempt to get her new Brexit deal passed. May is facing pressure to resign, and if she does, Letsim is expected to throw her hat into the ring to try and become the next prime minister. 
At least six people have been killed in Jakarta as protests continued on Wednesday after the official results of last month's election confirmed the re-election of Joko Widodo as president. The protesters, who are largely supporters of presidential candidate and former military general Prabowo Subianto, insist the widespread fraud took place before, during and after the election, leading to Widodo's victory. The protesters claimed the men killed were shot by riot police. Police deny those allegations. All major roads and public transport routes have been shut down in Jakarta, with more than 20,000 police deployed to stop the protests spreading. Time now for our Life and Info segment where we focus on information uh, that should be hope, uh, useful for you in your everyday life. Today we're going to talk about the increasing number of guest houses in South Korea. For that, we have our Kan Yang Woo in the studio to tell us more about what kind of experience we can expect if we stay at one of these guest houses. So Hyung Woo, why are guest houses and hostels and whatnot becoming so much more popular here in South Korea? Well, Mark, one thing that travelers find attractive about guest houses is that they're cheaper than yeah. hotels. <laughs> While hotel prices vary depending on their star ratings, staying at a guest house only costs about 20 US dollars per person per night. Some pri uh, the price range is generally around that number, but considering how cheap they are, the facilities and locations of the guest houses are top notch. Unless you book a private room, you will have to use shared showers and toilets, but they're kept in clean condition with towels, cleansing items, and dryers provided, of course. Many guest houses also offer individual lockers with a lock, so you don't have to worry about losing your items while you're traveling during the day. Plus, uh, they're located near popular tourist attractions or in the middle of downtown areas, meaning that uh, you can get to places easily. Yeah, I live near Hongdae and they are popping up all over the place, uh, guest houses in that area. Uh, that's very popular with young people, of mm -hmm. course, so the travellers uh, flock there. And plus there's the new uh, uh, airport subway line that's mm -hmm. in Hongdae, connects to Incheon and Gimpo airports as well. So they're cheap to stay at. They're usually in very good uh, places as well in uh, the country. And uh, did you get to meet any of these travellers then who are staying at these guest houses? Yes, indeed. Uh, so I've been to seven guest houses so far, five for my personal trips and two for this report. Okay. And I got to talk to some of the foreigners who stayed at a guest house and asked them how they felt. Let's take a listen. But for me, it took less than one day to be accustomed to this place because, uh, I mean, the guys here were so welcoming. Also the guests, but uh, the guys who are here, I mean, it felt like being uh, home while not being home. <laughs> so what is good in this place is that uh, even though you share a room with at least 10 people or eight, you have your own private space and you feel safe and at the same time really comfortable because you don't have to look at other people living. So it's really good. OK, well, it's interesting what uh, that woman there said mm -hmm. about uh, the private space you can get in these guest houses as well. The last time I stayed in any kind of guest house was back in 2002, uh, but I've never stayed in one here in, in Korea, but I'd like to uh, one time. But tell us <clears throat> about more about this uh, private space you can get if you don't want to stay in one of these dormitories. So they're technically in a dormitory style. They're called uh, capsule or cubic rooms. But before I get into that, let me give you a brief rundown of the normal style. So there are uh, dormitories, family rooms, and private rooms at a typical guest house. Mm. So a dormitory style usually offers bunk beds and can accommodate as many, pep as many people as it has beds. But from what I found, the capacity is often between 4 and 12. And hyung those are the rooms you're probably going to pay around 20 US dollars a night for, right? Rather than the private or family rooms. Yes, they're about $20 per night per person. But on the weekends, they can be a little more expensive. Okay. So uh, family rooms have two beds that can take up to four people and come with a small living room and private bathroom. Private rooms are usually for two people and they're similar to family rooms, but smaller. And about the capsule rooms or cubic rooms that I talked that, that the lady was talking about, 
They are designed to accommodate as many people as possible by maximizing the rooms, uh, the number of beds that are, that's in the room, and minimizing the extra space. Okay, so they have a little bit of something for everyone. If you have only a small amount of money available, you can stay in one of the bigger dorms. But if you have a bit more money to splash out, or you don't really feel like uh, mingling too much with other people, you can get the private room as well. But uh, if you go to the, these guest house, you really are going to meet different people from all over the world, right? Of course, Mark, you're always right. Uh, <laughs> it's not only that travelers staying at a guest house have opportunities to meet other visitors, yeah. but also some places have common areas for them to mingle with each other, as you said, mm. including a rooftop. Some guest houses organize their own barbecue parties and give advance notice through social media, so people who are planning to stay there can decide whether they want to join the party. There are also spontaneous get-togethers led by travelers themselves, so a few hellos here and there in the dormitory has a chance to become a full house party. Yeah, we have a couple of guest houses near our house and from time to time it does get a little bit rowdy at night time but they're usually pretty good at keeping the noise down past uh, midnight or something like that because a lot of the time these guest houses are in more residential areas because the value of the land is cheaper therefore they can provide the rooms for cheaper as well but it does sound like a, a lot of fun i wish i could go back to my youth and and try it again but before we let you go is there anything else you want to tell our viewers out there about the guest house experience overall i would say uh definitely compare uh, explore your options before you decide which place you want to stay at yeah according to the korea tour tourism organization's research in 2015, there are about uh, 1,600 guest houses in Seoul, Busan, and Jeju Island alone. Mm -hmm. But that number did not count the, uh, some of the unregistered ones. So experts say there are probably a lot more guest houses in South Korea than the number suggests. So if you search for a guest house in South Korea, I would definitely recommend comparing reviews on different booking websites. Always sound advice from you, Hyungu, and uh, yes, it goes without saying that you should check what other people are saying about guest houses, hotels, uh, pretty much everywhere you go, there's plenty of information online these days. Hyungu, thank you as always for coming in, and we appreciate your report. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And now we're going to take a look at some cultural events coming up here in South Korea. South Korean director Bong Joon-ho received an eight-minute standing ovation at the Cannes Film Festival on Tuesday night for his latest outing, Parasite. I don't like to follow the convention or codes for genre films. I try to convey messages about society through these broken codes. The audience at the 2300-seat Grand Theatre Luminaire burst into applause after the two-hour-long film. Parasite portrays a poor family getting involved with a wealthy family residing in a gaudy mansion. This is Bong's fifth time at Cannes and his second attempt to win the Palm d'Or in the main competition section following Okja in 2017. The International Olympic Committee has put forward the head of the Korean Sports and Olympic Committee, Lee Ki-hung, 
and nine other people as potential IOC candidates. The IOC said on Thursday that it will elect the new committee member at its 134th General Assembly in Switzerland from June 23rd to the 26th. If he secures the most votes, he will be the second South Korean to represent the country at the IOC. Right now, the only South Korean member of the IOC is Yoo Sung Min, the men's table tennis champion from the 2004 Athens Olympics. Good morning. It's going to be hotter today. In fact, a heat wave advisory has been issued in Daegu and parts of Gyeongsangdo provinces with an expected high of 33 degrees in those areas. And Seoul will also see highs soaring to 30 degrees. The unseasonably hot temperatures will be with us through Saturday and heat will hit its peak on Friday. Daegu could soar to 35 degrees, so brace for some midsummer-like temperatures. And back to today's forecast, regions in the west and Jeju Island will have to deal with high levels of fine dust today. And blue skies and beating sunshine are on the menu today, boosting UV rays to very high levels once again. It's going to feel more like late July by the afternoon. Shorts, a t-shirt and sunglasses might be a good idea. Some highly anticipated rain is in the forecast nationwide next Monday. And those showers will also bring cooler air to the country. That's Korea for you and here's the international weather for viewers around the world. Well, that's all the news and weather we have for now on this Thursday morning here in Seoul. Stay tuned to Adidang TV. And a reminder, our next newscast is at noon Korea time with our very own E. Jun. So until then, goodbye. SmartBiz Accelerators introduces smart factory solutions for small and mid-sized businesses that are striving to revive the domestic manufacturing sector. This week on SmartBiz Accelerators, we look into GasChem Technology, a reliable partner for corporations in the industrial gas sector, Gulmat World, a firm that specializes in producing marinated meat products, and Aluone, a manufacturer of aluminum that maximizes building efficiency. We also explore Korea Pedim, a market leader in lactobacillus-related products, Ujin Ecotech, a promising firm in the limelight for its eco-friendly products, and Cheongtap Agricultural Products, which is known for the red chili pepper powder. Don't forget to tune in and join us! Can chopsticks, the meme of Asia, become a UNESCO World Heritage? Korea, China, and Japan. Competitors or collaborators? Chopsticks, diversifying the world.
This is the celebration of a lifetime. A grand party, just for two people. The stars of the party, who will receive the blessings of all those presents, are the bride and groom, vowing a lifetime together. As the Turkish proverb goes, an important day is to be accompanied by sweet food and sweet talk. The next three days will be filled with all kinds of sweets. Let's begin the Turkish wedding. The sweetest of all weddings around the world. Istanbul, the city where Asia and Europe come together. With the Bosphorus in the center, the cultures of East and West meet here, creating a unique atmosphere unlike anywhere else. In this city where pieces of various cultures fit together like a puzzle, the cuisine is also multicolored. Turkish cuisine is renowned as the world's top three culinary traditions, as it presents an amalgam of diverse cultures accumulated over millennia. The streets were filled with such delicious sights and smells, I couldn't resist the temptation. We cross the Anatolia, a plateau filled with rich food cultures on the way to Denizli province in southwest Turkey. We traveled a long while before reaching our destination, Kale village, amidst the beautiful plains. Ah, this is Merhaba. 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 The bride is a kindergarten teacher who says she met and fell in love with her groom in college. In Turkey, tea is life itself. Due to the Islamic laws prohibiting alcohol, Turkish men socialize with friends and guests over tea. This is the second wedding for the family after the first daughters. Perhaps this is why the father seems relaxed. The busiest person before the wedding is the mother of the bride. Although there is a lot of work to do for the mother who has to do everything herself. She says she can manage, thanks to the entire family helping out. <laughs> the wedding feast is handmade by the entire family. Thus, the recipes differ between regions and families, even though similar dishes are served. The key to making great baklava lies in spreading the dough thinner than a piece of paper. Nuts like almonds and walnuts are sprinkled on top. Then the sheet is rolled and sliced into bite-sized pieces and baked. Mm -hmm. 
Sprinkle some syrup on top, and the sweet baklava is finished. Now, let's head to the next village where the groom, today's other star, is waiting. Ah, here we go. Hello. 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 Var, hazırlık var, heyecan var, hepsi var yani. Çok da sevgi alalım. Merhaba. 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 Hala. All the relatives have gathered at the groom's side too. Hayır, üzülmeyin, çok mutluyum. Onlar da orada bir yuvasını kursunlar. Orada bitti, kapım olu. Gider geliriz. Öyle ayıracağım diye hiç yok. Zaten hepsi benim evlatlarım. The groom's family is expected to prepare meat dishes. This family has already slaughtered four sheep and goats for the wedding. The groom's family has also made food for the banquet beforehand enlisting the help of all members. The main course is made by a hired professional chef. This is because the keshkek is a very special traditional food, made only by a special chef since long ago. It is rare to come by a chef who can make keshkek, as only trained professionals in the traditional way can make it. Evet, biz kalede sayılı, 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 kişiler, sayılı kişiler keşkek yapıyor. 